Hi everyone, Kate here for my June 2020 reading wrap up. And um, you know, this whole year has just felt so weird for reading. I feel constantly like I'm not reading that much, but then I look and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I read 10 books in June, so I, I don't I don't even know what to make of this year. But I'm here to tell you about the books that I read. And the first, um, which you will know that I was reading if you watched any of my Book Buddy-a-thon reading blogs, and that is The Princess Bride, S. Morgan Stern's classic tale of true love and high adventure by William Goldman. And this was a read aloud with my son, and I really enjoyed this. And I don't know why I enjoyed it so much, which I know that sounds weird to say, but it is really just feels like a screenplay of the movie. But it's just fun. It's a lot of fun. And there was one element where um, the Anigo and um, Fezzik have to travel through this death zoo. And it's not in the movie at all. And I thought, oh, that or the zoo of death something like that. And, um, so that was a really like one of the parts that I thought, oh, that would have been so cool for the movies. It would have been really interesting to see how that was done. And now it's not like you would even have to worry about, um, uh, you know, treatment of animals for it. You could just make them all CGI. So I guess if they ever did a new Princess Bride, I would love to see what they would do with the Zoo of Death. And the next one that I read is Mrs. Eris Goes to New York by Paul Gallico. And I will talk about my thoughts on this in my 2020 TBR stack wrap up. And then I have The Perfect Paragon by M.C. Beaton, the, the 16th Agatha Raisin book. And you guys have heard me go on and on about this series. Love it, love it, love it. And um, yeah, we'll definitely read the series to completion. So I have 24 books to go. Um, so I'm just over halfway, I guess. Um, not 24 books to go. I have 14 books to go. So I'm just over the halfway point of the series now. Then I read Hunter's Green by Phyllis Whitney um, with Brie from Falling for Romance. and Or she's Falling for Romance on Bookstagram and Brie Hill here on Booktube. And we had so much fun reading this. It's, um, you know, from what I've gathered about Phyllis Whitney, it's, you know, a woman who has baggage from her past, um, going back to, uh, you know, in a house that's very atmospheric and is a character of its own and sinister things are afoot and her trying to make heads or tails of what exactly is happening. And um, it's about kind of a rekindled love, which I always feel kind of conflicted about. I kind of wonder in those instances, are you guys meant to be together or are you just attracted to one another and you think you can make it work in the moment and then when it's really hard to be married, like it is, when it takes a lot of work, are you just gonna fizzle out all over again? So I do feel conflicted, but I really, really enjoyed this book. I'm so excited about Phyllis Whitney as an author and continuing on through her bibliography. Then I read North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. This was for my literary parlor book club that I host and we're now meeting on Zoom. And it was a lovely, lovely, lovely discussion with some people from the booktube community who also attended. So that was really cool to see the two groups meeting um, on Zoom. And I mean, I adore North and South and um, I just think it's such a perfect blend of social commentary, romance, um, mystery and intrigue and uh, really fascinating characters. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful book. Um, so that was my third time reading it and just loved it so much. Then I read The Blue Castle by Ellen Montgomery. These are, um, that was for another one for Book Buddy-a-thon, which I had a lot of fun um, doing Book Buddy-a-thon with Carolyn from Carolyn's Reading Rambles. And um, I just soaked up the blue castle. I was so worried it wasn't going to live up to my memory. Gave it five stars again. It's an excellent, excellent read. Perfect time of the year to read it. I think really, um, you know, heading out of spring, heading into summer. It's a glorious, glorious book that I will be rereading over and over again. And I'm gonna see if I can fight off this yawn that I've been trying to fight off the entire video. Um, then I read The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie. 
And um, I loved this one. This one was great. I um, had a really like mixed bag kind of reading experience with the Hercule Poirot books, but this was one that I just loved. I felt like it had a very intentional and, um, what do I want to say? Just an intentional way the plot was heading. It didn't feel like it was me meandering everywhere. I felt really compelled to keep reading. It felt so suspenseful. Um, do not <laughs> watch the John Malkovich adaptation. Um, I will link down below Katie from Books and Things. She talked about how um, she she said that the, these modern adaptations of Agatha Christie's books, they try to turn Agatha Christie into like a gritty crime drama writer and she's not, she's cozy mystery. And the reason they do that is because, oh, I, get all, I get all feisty about this. The reason they do that because it's the same people who think the only books with merit are literary fiction books in that category um, because things have to be really serious and tortured to have meaning. And anything that is cozy and has warmth in it is just trite and not worth our time. Um, which is just, it's not an if this or that. It can't, it's not, it either has to be cozy or it has to be deep and have meaning. Um, that's actually, it's funny because Roger Hamley in Wives and Daughters, um, he they're discussing books and he says, in response to someone's comment, you say, oh no, it's not deep. It's very interesting about a certain book. Why does a book, you know, if it's interesting, then it isn't deep. You know, if a book is really gripping, then it isn't deep. So I'm just so not on board with the people who write these screenplays for them. I told, I agreed like with pretty much everything Katie said in her video, I couldn't really fault the acting. Um, I, I thought the acting actually was pretty great. It was just the, the editing and the screenplay they did for it. They just made it, the darkness um, they put in, it just, you're grabbing at straws. It wasn't there. Um, so I was gonna do a whole video comparing the two. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna get the John Malkovich one over with first. I'm gonna watch that first. And you know what? I didn't wanna watch the, the great one, the David Suchet one after that. I was so worn out by it. So I'm just not doing that video now because I was so worn out by watching the John Malkovich one. I almost made it without yawning. Moving on, I, I'm just, I'm never watching that again. And I've learned my lesson. Now this is the like third modern Agatha Christie um, that I've watched and I've just been like, where are they getting this? Ordeal by Innocence was another one. Um, and Murder on the Orient Express. That one's different. That one wasn't unnecessarily dark, but it was just a little bit too Hollywood for me. But although if Kenneth Branagh has another one that comes out, I'm going to see that, that because those, like I said, aren't unnecessarily dark and try to make Agatha Christie what she isn't. Um, then a very fun reading experience that I had was listening to Jen Campbell read aloud Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. And she read it aloud every day on her Insta stories. And it was such a treat and it became part of my day. I would have tea and listen to it and I just loved it. And a lot of the times, if my husband was downstairs, he would listen too. And it was just an utter delight. I love this story so much. I think it was my, my fourth time reading this. I had to think about that. Um, and I will never tire of this. I've said in the past few years, for some reason, I just haven't been as much in the mood for Jane Austen. But I'm kind of always in the mood for Pride and Prejudice. And maybe if I picked up her other books, I would feel like, no, I'm really enjoying this, but I just love Pride and Prejudice so much. Um, yeah, so it was very, very fun to revisit that in a fun way. And um, I will link her video down, her first video down below. She put them in omnibus form then on YouTube. And um, her Mrs. Bennett voice was amazing. So I definitely recommend you go check those out. And then I read Joy in the Morning by Betty Smith. This is part of my 2020 TBR stack. So you will hear me talk about that in my, um, you know, TBR stack update video that comes out next. And then I read Slipper by Hester Bellmans, which is one that is part of the Cinderella Chronicles. And I will leave that for a Cinderella Chronicles video. So I hope you enjoyed hearing about the books that I read in June. And please tell me what was your favorite book that you read last month. And I will be back for another video soon. Thanks for watching, bye.